Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Committed Critics, a pop culture podcast where we're not only committed to our opinions, but also each other. Aww. Aww. I am Zach, right? And that's weird to say first. <laughs> Whoa, you're not Kevin Lau? Who I'm not hell? Kevin Lau. <laughs> I'm not appropriating his culture. <laughs> I'm Ryan Davis, by the way. <laughs> and I'm Jordan. She yeah. has no last name. <laughs> she has no last name. She no. has no name. Uh, girl with no name. Uh, Kevin okay. is out today. He got <laughs> he fell into just a toxic vat. Unfortunately, he has green hair now. Um, he might yeah, be. He laughs after a lot Ryan. too. He laughs a lot. He might be coming after Ryan mm, because Ryan's uh-oh. also dressed in a bat costume. Yeah. Um. So, so yeah. So send your thoughts and prayers out to Kevin. Uh, send today, your thoughts and prayers out to me. <laughs> <laughs> today we are talking about our favorite Disney Channel original movies or DCOMs for short. Whoa. Uh-huh. I hate that um, word. <laughs> I know, right? So we have gone through and we have picked out our, each of us had to gone through and picked out our top fives. Um, the first part of the episode is going to be our five through three. We're going to go to break and we'll talk about our honorable mentions and our top two picks at the end of the episode. So stick around for the, our, our top picks to see what we've ranked at number one for each of us. Let's take a stroll down memory lane. Let's yeah. go. Oh. So going through this real quick, I did not realize how many Disney Channel original movies there actually are. How many are. bangers there are. There's a lot of bangers, but there's also a lot of misses, too. Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of misses. Um, we have picked just anything that aired on Disney Channel. The only thing we straight straight away from were things that were like syndicated on like ABC Family, so like Princess Diaries also aired mm-hmm. on like ABC Family. I try to I try to keep my list to personally just Disney Channel movies. That's fair. Um, yeah. So with that being said, Ryan, would you like to start first with your five through three picks? Sure, I will. Um, so for number five, Up, Up and Away. That was Sky High before it was Sky High. That's a good one. It's a good one. Good one. I was oh like, my I god, it. we didn't put Sky High on here. Sky High was in I, theaters. Was yeah, it? that was the thing. Yeah, oh, yeah okay. it's a theater movie. Okay. Yeah, it I mean, was it a did Disney air Channel on Disney movie. Channel, but it yeah, it was a theater. Oh, movie. Thank I saw that. God, shit. I thought we had to cancel up. So, <laughs> no, I saw that at the drive-in. <laughs> nice. Yeah. No, because I was about. To, I I looked it up too, Zach, because I was like, a Sky High a Disney Channel original movie. I was oh, like, so I don't good. think it is. Daniel Pennebaker was in it. <laughs> true, true, true. All right, so good. Number four, Ryan. Number four is Let It Shine ah. with uh some of the best music ever. I'm sorry, High School Musical, but I enjoyed this a little bit more because Don't Run Away from the Truth. Um, and number oh, three, the pr- I know, right? Um, number three was the Proud Family movie. I know it's technically like you know a move one. That, some some of my picks are like movies that have a TV series originally, but they are technically yeah. still Disney Channel original movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's fair. Um, Jordan, so. go with your five pick. Your five two three. All right, number five, Avalon High. Deep oh. fucking cut. <laughs> Love Let this movie. Tell I am obsessed with this movie. My little sexist ass eight year old brain, <laughs> mine was blown. <laughs> when I was like, oh my God, King Arthur can be a girl? <laughs> what? Zach, here's the sad thing. I think anime did it first. <laughs> I'm sure it did. I'm sure I'm sure every form of media did this story first. Oh, uh, but it's still good regardless. It was Avalon like a lot high. It was a serious, quote unquote, serious Disney Channel movie. Like there was no musical aspect to it. Greg Sulkin was in it. Uh, you guys, were, you guys know who the bad guy is, right? Who was the bad no, guy? Who? He was the guy, like the guitarist from fucking I'm in the band. Oh, he was. <laughs> really? No, it was Teen Beach movie. No, it was. He was a bad guy in that one too. I think so. Yeah. Hang on. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, he, it is him. It is. It's him. definitely that guy. Yeah. I don't also, know. I've a TV series of this for some reason too. <laughs> There's a TV series of Avalon High? No, I won it one. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. It was him. Yeah, it was totally that guy. <laughs> don't, don't remind me of I'm in the band. That movie, that show traumatized me, too. Unhinge, bro. Unhinge. That one was a good show, okay? That was one of Disney. That was up there with, like, Zeke and Luther, Star Wars Rebels, and fucking Tron Uprising. <laughs> on the same, like, time frame. Jeez, it was, though. Okay. Number uh, four, Jordan. Number four is Jump In. Yes. Love this movie. Love this movie. Wanted to learn how to double dutch so bad because of this movie. I think every kid did, yeah. Yes. I was like, double dutching this for girls. Oh, wait, Corbin Blue's doing it. Never mind. <laughs> Ryan's sexy Push it to the limit. Push it to the limit. Can Push we talk about limit. that? My brothers were obsessed with that song. <laughs> I'm still obsessed with that song. It's a great song. God, if I wanted to be a boxer, I wanted to be a double dutcher. I oh. will say, I wish this would have propelled Corbin, Br- Corbin Blue's career a little bit more. But man, he did go to yeah. Broadway after this. I was so gonna like, say he's a very successful Broadway actor. Is he? Yes. Is it? All right. 
Was this the prequel to Creed or the? Oh my <laughs> god! <Creed>? Yes. <laughs> yes. And then number three. Okay, my top three. Let me talk about this for a second. My top three, I struggled with because if you ask me now what my favorite decom movie is, it's going to be my third pick. However, it's my third pick this way because the uh, my my number two, my number one spot had a much more impactful part of my childhood. You have a deeper connection to two and one. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's makes sense. sense. But like the Disney Channel original movie that I enjoy the most is my third pick, which is Lemonade Mouth. Absolutely love this movie. God love that movie. The I world s- until it dance floor. Great soundtrack. Um, I still have the soundtrack on my playlist. Yes, as you should. Um, the other thing too, like it was like Disney Channel's version of The Breakfast Club. Yeah, it and was. As someone yeah. who was obsessed with The Breakfast Club all throughout high school and a little bit into college. The whole reason I wanted to make movies in the first place was because of the Breakfast Club. It's just kind of a rip off of Breakfast Club, and I think yeah, about it. Yeah, it definitely is. <laughs> and that's what I originally thought of when it came out. I was like, "This is just a rip off of the Breakfast Club." And then I watched it, and I was like, "This is so good." So yeah, that is my third pick. All right, I got some bangers. All I, on. all I know from Lemonade Mouth is that a white guy rapped and it threw me off. He sure did, <laughs> and that Luther. guy, and that guy went to jail. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Uh, number five for me is Twitches. Yeah. Twitches? Ah, Twitches. Fire, dude. Number one and two going into the darkness. Hell yeah. The uncle comes back. You're like, what? Okay, do we like the first Twitches or the second Twitches better? I like the first Twitches. That's what uh, I'm I can barely remember yeah. the second one. I know like the second one, it's like the shadow guy coming through or whatever. And it's actually like, oh my God, it's their dad. No, it's the uncle who he banished mm-hmm. the last time. Here's the thing. I, I feel like I saw Twitches 2 more, but I'm but I think Twitches 1 was better. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I would agree with that. Uh, number four for me, this will be a hot take for everyone. Teen Beach movie. Terrible. Ugh. Now, let me tell you. Let me tell you. This Terrible. is the la- this is the last good decom. OK, it wasn't good. It, it, it was fine. It was tall. It, it's it's no, nah, I can't say tall after it's, after the decoms after this. It's downhill. There's nothing oh, good. Yeah, after no, this one. But let me tell they you, made, they cruising they made for a bruising movie. Yeah, that, don't talk about that one. The second one is, oh my God. Cruising for a Bruising Ryan, that song fucking slaps. You got here's Jordan Fisher this movie. That's true. That was Jordan Fisher's break. Zach, here's the thing. Teen Beach yeah. movie is just camp rock, but with a beach theme. Correct, yes. <laughs> well, okay. It's like... Don't be wrong. The plot sucks. The like, it's not a good terrible. story. It's But the music, I picked this solely because of the music. If you go back and listen to the soundtrack, it's actually really good. <laughs> Which also, a little bit spoiled. I'm, Jordan, I'm surprised you don't have Camp Rock on here. <laughs> it's a... Oh, you know what? Okay. I didn't put Camp Rock on mine either, to be honest with you. I love Camp Rock. I do. But again, the ones that had the most impactful part of my childhood. Camp Rock just did. There were other ones. I think looking at Camp Rock, like, I like the music a lot. But, like, that's really all I got. Like, every time I watch the, like... Every time I go back, I'm kind of, like, thinking about the plot of, like, the first one. I'm like, man, Mitchie's kind of annoying. Oh, yeah. And, Here's like, the thing. I just... I had a good personal hatred for Camp Rock because I went to a it was called a, it was a music art and drama camp. It was called Mad, <laughs> but, <laughs> but we called it Damn because we're stupid children at the time. But they Camp Rock is what came out that year, so they played it for us. And of course, all the girls are like Jonas Brothers, and all the guys are like, "Y'all want to go play basketball?" <laughs> I want to go ball it up. I will say Camp Rock too, though. The music in there, not yeah, bad. but it's kind of cringy. Okay, oh, it's definitely cringy. Fire from the camp star people. Yes, that. Oh my god, that song fucking rips, dude. I don't think I saw Camp Rock too. <laughs> just watch, look up the fire song from Camp Rock too. It's just called Fire. It is a fucking. That's a good banger. one. That one's a good one. Um, and my number three is a classic Halloween Town. I'm just gonna say the Halloween Town franchise because yeah, is that including the fourth one? Yeah, the fourth one's fine. Okay. Yeah, it's not great. Yeah, okay. I didn't mind the fourth <laughs> one personally. Everyone hates I didn't know it. Was a fourth. I didn't know there was a fourth one. Well, they switched. Um, Kimberly J. Brown does not play yeah. Barney. It's uh, Sarah, Sarah Campbell, I think. Something yeah. like that, yeah. Uh, like, it's fine. It's not great, but it's fine. Sarah Paxton. Like, yeah, it's definitely like a reboot kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, Return to Halloween Town. Yep, okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. it's, yeah. That's what it I honestly, yeah. I don't care for the third one either. Halloween Town High? Yeah. Don't care for I it. I like that one. It's not my favorite. I like the first two, and that's really it. Yeah. The first one in Calabar's Revenge. That's fair. I remember, um, what was this, junior year of college mm-hmm. or sophomore year, one of the two, 
um, I was making questions for the for Haikyuu. And for some, it was in October. I remember this specifically because the Disney Channel YouTube was playing a nonstop oh, yeah, Halloween, Halloween Town. Town. It was like a 24 hour thing. And so I was just watching Halloween Town as I was making these questions. And it was I the best that, thing yeah. ever. I think that was sophomore year. No. It was sophomore, junior year. One sophomore, two. junior year. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So how did you guys decide between five and three? Like, what was your criteria? Because like for me, it was like I wanted to include some movies like because I really like Twitches. Mm -hmm. I like the music from Team Beach movie and like Halloween Town is just a classic. Um, for me, so up, up and away, I remember watching all the time because I, you know, I'm superheroes. I love all that. The only problem I had with this, like, I can't remember the weakness was like tinfoil or something. Yeah. And that was the only thing that got me kind of like, really? All right. But it was, I mean, it was a successful black family that was superhero. So it was like, that was big for me as a kid. Uh, Let it shine. I had me and my brothers enjoying the music. And then the Proud Family movie again. Yeah. Okay. All three of my top movies are black people. Okay. Um, yeah. Right. Okay. It's not diversity. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's diversity and also like it it's kind of sad though that like the ones that you picked are actually like the only ones. Yeah. Like the only well, decom movies that have black people in them. Or okay, like here's a funny people. thing. When I was like looking through them, I found this movie. It's called The Color of Friendship because it threw me yep. off because it was right next to Up, Up and Away. And I was I like, remember oh, this that movie. I was like, <laughs> I was like, Jesus Christ, why is this movie not talked about more? The I'm color like, this of friendship. is. This is like hard hitting. I was like, I can't believe this but is a isn't Disney it, Channel original movie. But isn't it I'm, like the white girls getting bullied? Yeah, the white girl. So the white girl is from South America, South Africa, because yeah. you know apartheid and everything. So it's like it definitely throws your like everything in perspective. Like, hey, yeah, because she also doesn't think that black people can be successful because of how apartheid works in South South mm -hmm. Africa. But God, like, okay. As I read the plot of it, I'm like, Jesus Christ, this is like in like. This is hard hitting stuff. I'm like, this is stuff really that was. like should should be talked about more. And I'm like, but of course, no one cares because I do it talks about racism. <laughs> I do think that we've mentioned most of that the diverse, um, like leading decoms in our list. I think we do. Well, I mean, I, after that, they all kind of just become generic. Yeah, because like we have Twitches, so. we have Jump In, we have Up and Away, Let It Shine, Proud Family Movie. Jordan's going to mention only, a couple other ones later. I think the only movie that becomes like the only movies that are good in the future decoms are, de are the Descendants movies. And that's probably about it. Okay. I have yet to watch those. I think we should watch them. I've seen the first one and I've seen like the, the very first half of the second one. I've seen the song the villain sings in the third one. See, I have not seen is that the mean. China. Is that, is, oh, I was like, is that China? No, 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 no that's the Queen second one. <laughs> the second one is her Uma song. I haven't seen the third one. I just know the third one, uh, the one kid is dead like when it comes out. Yeah, Karen yeah. Boyce. Rest in peace, yeah. Karen Boyce. But um, for me, how I chose mine, um, like I said, it's the ones that had the most impactful part of my child or like impacted me the most growing up. Like it was the ones that I knew I could watch over and over and over again. Like anytime they were on Disney Channel, I saw them and I was like, fuck yeah, I'm watching these. Avalon High was just one of those like hyper fixations. I it was like this one. And um, for some reason, the animated Alice in Wonderland, I was obsessed with. And um, wait, the animated Alice, like as in the, the, the Disney. One, right? Yeah. OK. And then the Barbie and the 12 Dancing Princesses. I don't know why it was these three that like I was always obsessed with. And when they came on, I wanted to watch them. And it was just like one of those things where it's like I felt like I never watched them all the way through. So anytime they were on, I was like, I'm going to watch them. And then I never ended up finishing it. But for some reason, I don't know. Avalon High, I watched that recently when Disney Plus like first came out. And I was like, this is this is a banger. Hmm. The other ones I was just I love. I love them. Yeah, for me, I definitely I started from the top and worked my way mm -hmm. down, which I usually don't like to do. But there are so many decoms that I was yeah. like, okay, I wanted to include Halloween Town somewhere. And like my one and two where they're like, they're pretty much like the like epitome of like decom movies. Like it doesn't yeah, really my, get like, yeah. My one and two, I didn't realize I forgot again. Like I forgot some of these TV series are technically they made movies, but are technically Disney Channel original movies. Mm -hmm. right. So I real when I recognized that I was like, oh. Or well, all my entire list just got thrown off because I had something going into this, mm -hmm. and I realized right. those. I was like, "Oh well, I guess this is it." 
Yeah. So with that being said, let's go ahead and take a quick break and we'll come back and discuss our honorable mentions and our picks two in one. See ya. See you in a little bit. Hey everybody, my name is Jordan, and you've probably heard me on an episode or two, but did you know I also have a baking channel? Bluebell Bake is by The Amateur Baker for The Amateur Baker. On the channel, I'll be posting recipes, tips and tricks, and more so we can all learn to better our baking skills. You can find my channel on YouTube at Bluebell Bake, we're currently posting monthly, or on Instagram and TikTok, both at bluebell.bake. Come join our little community where no matter what happens, we keep on baking. Don't you wish there was a pop culture review site that appealed to cinephiles, both professional and casual? Well, look no further than crprights.com. New content such as movie and TV reviews, film essays, and more are released every week by writers who crave for movies like every moviegoer craves for popcorn. CRP Rights is dedicated to making sure no one is wasting time or money where they shouldn't be. After all, you have to be able to buy your popcorn and eat it too. CRPRights.com. Casual reviews with purpose since 2018. And welcome back to Committed Critics. We talk about our favorite DCOM movies. Um, we're going to go through our honorable mentions real quick, but real first, I had a tweet out earlier this week about, um, I just kind of tweet out to my six Twitter followers <laughs> and see what people replied with for their favorite decom movies. Um, Danny Connolly also said Lemonade, Lemonade Mouth. Fuck yeah. My mother, Jody Wright, said High School Musical. Yeah. Ryan told me to look at my podcast notes. I don't know why he thought <laughs> that was topical. <laughs> um, Andy Phillips, Randy Phillips just tweeted out at me a big picture of a bunch of v- VHS tapes in a bin. Uh, let's see what we got in here. We got dinosaur. <laughs> we, goofy ha- movie. we have goofy movie. <coughs> um, snow dogs, dude. Ooh, okay. Snow dogs. Snow dogs. Do you remember that Mitchell Musso? He redid, um, like call on me. No, what's the song? Um, uh, lean on me. He redid the mm-hmm. song. Lean on me. Did he really like the bill Withers song? Yes. But it's like a, like a, like a fast paced version. Of it. It's actually really good. Okay. I was obsessed with that trying to find that song on fucking iTunes as a kid <laughs> and it never got released. I pissed off about it. I'm surprised he has Brave Little Toaster 1 and 2. The Lizzie McGuire movie? Oh, shit. That's a good one. Actually, it was uh, in theaters, wasn't it? Was it? I or was it, it a direct-to-DVD? Maybe it was direct-to-DVD. That was also a really good movie. Or and VHS. Ryan Kowalkowski from Ryan's Plays Drums also said, Eddie's Million Dollar Cook-Off is goaded with, quote, literal sauce. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, honorable mentions. Jordan, what are your honorable mentions? All right. My first honorable mention is Wendy Wu, Home- Homecoming Warrior. <laughs> <laughs> Love this one. That shit actually slaps. It's a bad yeah. <laughs> Brenda the, Song. Well, they're doing the doing flips and shit Fu. with the terracotta warriors yes. at the end. <laughs> so good. Um, my other one is Cadet Kelly. Remember that? I really like this one. Not a fan of that one, personally. <coughs> Sorry. Um, you know what? You're not a fan of Cadet Kelly? No, nah, I couldn't Oh my didn't god, it's so it. good. The scarves. I don't I don't even remember. I just remember there were scarves. I remember the fish at the beginning that she breaks. I remember the twirling of the guns. With the rifles. <laughs> yes. Yes. We had some of those in band. I would do it and try to like fake the movie. Like, <laughs> oh, like act geez. like I was doing like, look, I'm Cadet Kelly. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, And then Ice Princess. This was also one that I was kind of obsessed with as a kid. I remember vividly that commercial. And it was like the guy with the, like, he always did the decom movies like Ice Princess, Michelle Trackenberg, Hannah mm-hmm. Panty and did the whole thing, you know. Buzz Brainer. Buzz Brainer. Oh, from my God. Highway. From the highway. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah. Ice Princess is the one I do not know. Okay, Ice Princess was um, an ice If I ice showed skater. you that commercial, Ryan, you would 100% know what I'm talking about. So it has uh, Michelle Trachenberg in it, and she's like, she just likes to ice skate back on her pond, and she finds this passion to go to an ice rink and ends up like becoming a really good ice skater and competes, and she wins. And she makes new friends and all this other stuff and has like a coach that's hard on her, but then ends up like really enjoying and rooting for her at the end. Hmm. It's kind of similar to the Margot Robbie, Sebastian Stan movie, I, Tanya. No, it is not. <laughs> oh, <I'm just> <laughs> <laughs> no, it's 
No, I loved I, I loved Ice Princess. I just I always wanted to learn how to ice skate because of it. Very influential. Like anytime I watched a, a decom movie, I was like, yo, this is what I want to do. <laughs> learn Kung Fu. Ryan, what are your honorable mentions that did make your list? OK, so I one, I need to stay off this, this list of Disney Channel original movies because the more I see, the more I'm like, oh, I, I remember that. I remember that. Uh, Jump in was part of my honorable mentions. Hell it, yeah. It, Jordan, that was one of the ones that originally was on the top five list, but mm-hmm. then it got cut because I found out about the other movies. Uh, what, what, cut Iron, it, what, ended up, what ended up cutting it? What, what, what it was the nail in the coffin? Uh, uh, it was the one in, number one and two. Fair. Ah, damn. Because originally it was number five, and then it was going to be Let It Shine, and uh, no, then it was going to be Up, Up, and Away and Let It Shine, but then I realized one, two, and three existed, so I was like, oh, well, I got to get rid of Jumpin' and Luck of the Irish. Because uh-huh. I remember Luck of the Irish, and I I don't know why this movie fascinates me so much. Maybe it's the fact that it was like, oh, yeah, he just beats him because he, he sends him to the Lake Erie at the end. <laughs> I, I have one just like that, Ryan, where it's like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> I was just like, why did he send him to Lake Erie? He's like, my dad. My dad's from Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it was my dad's Christ. from Cleveland or something. I was like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> um and then these were kind of just tied, but Wizard of Waverly Place and Sweet Life on Deck movies, uh, because they both traumatized me, uh, mainly because Sweet Life on Deck was like, we're going to fuse you two together. That was so weird. That was weird, dude. The Sweet, Sweet Life on Deck movie, movie we don't need to talk about that. That can die. I don't care for that at all. <laughs> and, and then the Wizard of Waverly Place movie, because the kids just started dying at the end. And I was like, Bro, oh, Wizard of oh, Waverly Place, heartbreaking. Such a good movie. Honestly, yes. very good. I was, that was, that good. Was, in my, that was in my top five, but then I wanted to put in Twitches instead. That should have been the conclusion for the series, in my opinion. But then we mm-hmm. got all the other stuff, like fighting angels and all the other stuff. So hey, we did, we got Werewolves versus Angels, which is a great arc, <laughs> weird arc, but great arc. <laughs> hey, yeah, I remember watching the Wizards of Waverly Place movie like the night that it debuted. It yeah. was me, my brother, and my dad in our basement. Like they actually they wanted to watch it. Yeah, they nice. wanted they wanted to watch it with me. They did not like I, it. I thought it I was just, pretty good. I just love that they actually brought it out like like you know it's more cinema ta- cinem- cin- 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 yeah it's more cinematic there's it's got yeah. a nicer mm-hmm. camera for sure <laughs> it feels like a movie yeah instead of just like hey this is a sitcom but mm-hmm. movie form um for me yeah. so my honorable mentions aren't necessarily ones I think that are good it's more just things I'm ones I remember watching and I was like what the fuck is this shit <laughs> um. Specifically for that one, thirteenth year. Remember it, that one, guys? The mermaid. So I look. I looked it up because I was like, "Do I remember this?" And as I'm reading it, I'm like, "Oh, right, this was a yeah, weird movie. It's <laughs> fucked up, dude. <laughs> this kid gets turned like is like like son of a mermaid, right? And he will officially turn into a mermaid on his thirteenth birthday. And so he has to like leave his fam- adoptive family and friends behind and go live in the ocean as a mermaid. Like, yep. That's the that's the resolution. There is no like stopping the curse or like realizing, oh, like my family who raised me is the fan, like my true family. No, he fucks off and goes to the ocean with his hot mom. Like what? They like, should have made a sequel or something. I don't know. Like, yeah, he had to leave his like his girlfriend behind. His girlfriend's crying and shit. Also, yeah, dude. a kid almost dies in the, in the movie. From yeah, drowning. dude, it's it's messed up. I'm not a fan of this movie. I just want to call it out and realizing how fucked up it is. That's luck of the Irish, but le- but more depressing. Yeah, the other other two, John, Johnny Tsunami and Johnny Kabahala, back on board. Johnny those Kabahala are, fucking slapped. Those actually slap. I I agree. Those are good. I'm down with those. Mm-hmm. F- do you remember Full Court Miracle, Ryan? I do not. Full Court Miracle is about the Jewish basketball team. <laughs> Where like is this star Martin Lawrence? I might. I think Martin Lawrence. I'm, I'm looking it up right now. Richard T. Jones. Basically, the oh. only thing I remember this vividly is that the ending is just like in Hanukkah like when the oil lamp or like for the menorah like doesn't run out like it magically like miraculously has enough to like last like seven days or whatever the oil lamp like oil running the fucking school has enough oil to like survive the power outage or some shit so they could finish the <laughs> basketball game <laughs> that oh is what god. I remember vividly I was like oh my god they're like oh my god it's a miracle <laughs> rebound the- is the Martin Lawrence one yeah here's the thing looking back on that looking on that movie like i'm reading over right now i'm like it's nice you gave a movie for jewish kids but at the same time like this why did y'all make it so weird yeah it it was like down to the letter of like the like the um like the hanukkah story down to the letter it just happens with basketball (laughs) i have i have another honorable mention or just a blast from the past do you guys remember 
a little vampire? Yes. Yes. Faintly. Where, okay, the one specific scene I remember from this is the, like, little girl vampire trying to teach the other kid, like, how to whistle um, to, like, call them. Don't remember that at all. Oh, uh, my God. That scene is, like, embedded in my mind for the rest of my life. I don't know why, but it was just, like, the weirdest thing. Like, she was trying to teach him how to whistle to call the little vampires when he needed help because he got buried alive. Oh, God. <laughs> Jesus. Like, he was... Like he was trying to catch the bad guys because they were trying to kill the vampires or whatever. And they put him in a coffin and like bury him alive. And then he whistles and they find him. Some of these older Disney Channel movies are kind of traumatic, honestly. I'm looking at dad and they've got dad napped over here. We got Prince dad napped. Good. Dad napped was good. good. Hatching Pete. Hatching Pete. Hatching Pete. Let's see. What else do we got on here? I'm like, some of these are just like, what? Get a clue. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, we gotta move on to our top two yeah. picks, though. Ryan, would you like to go first with your number two pick? Sure. People are gonna call me fake for putting these as my top two picks, but whatever. Um, number two, Kim Possible, so the drama. Uh, I enough. love this movie because I was like, I enjoyed Kim Possible, and I was like, hold up a second, they made a movie. She gets a new suit. It looks cool, and it also has the best fight between her and Shigo. Also, uh, your boyfriend is gonna be a sludge monster. Definitely. Nice. <laughs> Um, great movie. Uh, and then my number one, Phineas and Ferb across the second dimension. I'm a Phineas and Ferb fan. It came up with some of the best memes and some of the best songs. So, uh, perfect movie. 10 out of 10. Mm-hmm. That's we'll actually a really good movie. Like looking it at is. it, like Phineas and Ferb, like that's a really good movie. They did a really good job on it. Is that the one where they find out Perry is a secret okay, agent that's what I and they yeah. travel to the, other, to like the parallel universe where mm-hmm. Doom Spurts wins and is actually really evil. Yeah. Like it's really good. <laughs> because he lost his choo-choo train. <laughs> Yeah, like he's actually like a like a, like a serious like a super villain. Mm-hmm. Like it's really good, Jordan. That's where um the whole it was like if I had a nickel for every time I was doomed by a puppet, I'd have two nickels. Two nickels, <laughs> which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it's happened twice, right? Uh, uh, love that, Jordan. Movie. Your picks sequel number two. Go. I know it's uh, they're they're the sequels. Uh, number two, High School Musical two. I remember uh, in our neighborhood. Growing up, we had like a High School Musical 2 watch party, and it was the greatest night of my life. (laughs) Wow. All right. (laughs) It was so, no, when I was a kid, it was so good. Just like (laughs) having the premiere because like Disney Channel had like they went all out with that stuff. They were like, go to DisneyChannel.com and you can like print out like the name, the like little passes and movie tickets and everything and have a whole High School Musical 2 watch party like premiere thing. And it was so much fun. Love that one. Not my favorite growing up, honestly. I liked the third one the best, but like Jordan, looking back on it now, the second one, outstanding. Here, Jordan, here's the only thing I have a problem with High School Musical 2. Looking back mm-hmm. on it, I'm like, man, Zach actually had like options and like for you know his future in college. I was like, but he, gosh darn, because we all hate Sharpay. Sharpay yeah. was terrible, but. She at least gave him. She was opening doors for him. She had ulterior (laughs) motives and fucking Troy did not like was like, no, I'm going to stick with this with Gabrielle. Like Mm -hmm. he could be like, like, look, Sharpay, I'm not into you like that. But like, I appreciate the opportunities here. I really do. Like Mm -hmm. full rides and shit, dog. I I would have sold my soul so fast. (laughs) But he didn't know what he wanted for his future. Okay, he wasn't sure. It's free. (laughs) Um. Also, Anyways. apparently Gabriella was de- drowning at the end of the movie, is from what I've heard. Oh, oh yeah, she was struggling. She was not happy at the end. <laughs> um, number one, the one that had probably the greatest impact on my childhood, Cheetah Girls 2. Love this movie. Sure. Had another Fair. watch party for this one. I don't think you guys understand how obsessed I was with Cheetah Girls. Um, like, I had, my mom found a little, like, cheetah print vest from the consignment shop, and I wore that shit every day. Over the summer when I was in Latchkey, I brought my Cheetah Girls 2 CD to Latchkey and I made up dances. Like, I wanted to be a Cheetah Girl so fucking bad. Oh, so good. So, right. so good. Did not realize that's how much all your extent of your love for Cheetah Girls was. I, did, I didn't really, like, think about it either until, like, I thought about and I was ranking this and I was like, wow, I just unlocked so many memories. But yes, I made up so many dances to Cheetah Girl songs. Number two for me mm-hmm. is Minutemen. <laughs> Y'all remember Minutemen? Mm-hmm. Yes, I remember Minutemen. Because <laughs> this movie fucking is a banger, dogs. This oh. kid, I will say, the Jason Dolly like stuff is pretty weak. Where it's like, oh, he just he left his friend or whatever, 
and like the betrayal with his other best friend, like that that whole arc, whatever. But the kid making the black, like the time machine and shit. Charlie. Awesome. The guy who's now in succession, mm-hmm. uh, Greg. He's also in Sky High. He's also in Sky High. Yeah. Awesome. I love this movie. <laughs> I watched this movie so many times, like when I was like in like like late grade school, whatever it would came out, whatever it was. Like, oh, my God. The, when the black hole's opening up inside this town, they have to, like, jump in and go back in time and, like, fix all their shit. Was that well, mind is, well, Blue Mind is, like, jump in the black hole and they go back in time and have to fix the anomaly, like, the anomalies, like, what they fucked up. That blew my mind. I was like, whoa, Endgame could never, guys. <laughs> um, oh. And number number one for me is High School Musical 2 because, come on, it's the epitome of DCOM. Like Jordan said, there was that whole, like, Disney was putting on, like, this whole, like, watch party and shit. We had and a watch party, too. they taught you how to do the dances and stuff? Yeah, we had, like, oh. Katie, my sister's friends, they came over, we watched it. Like, it was the epitome of, like, Guys, DCOM. Like, the, all like I'm gonna the say, peak. All I'm going to yeah. say is High School Musical 2 was where they introduced Finney Surfer. That's it true. It is true, yeah. The very, I remember that. Even more reason why it's number one, because it introduced Phineas and Ferb, and it was <laughs> peak. I, I see, here's the thing. I feel like the move, the music in High School Musical 1 is better, but I did have a bet on it moment in college, so you I did. can't, you sure did. I can't oh, deny it. Yeah, you did. Oh, the music, I will die on this hill. The music in number two is the best. It beats one and three. Like, you can't beat any of those songs. <sighs> I'm debating on because here's the thing, there's like two songs in each movie that I think are like, pe- are like great. And then the rest, I'm just kind of like, eh, I can live with. with the only that. one in three that I like more is Scream. Scream is fucking phenomenal. Which one is Scream? Where with all the basketball. It's Troy's the, bet on moment number three. That's where like the, okay. the hallway like does it like turns, rotates. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you slide that, okay. around. They that really was cinema. Went, they went all out with three. I was like, I, when they said it was going to be in theaters, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I saw yeah. this shit in theaters. It was amazing. I, I will too. say, I think High School Musical 2 is the peak of Disney Channel. Like, that's where Disney Channel peaked. Because mm-hmm. you have Phineas and Ferb the, coming the out. In 2007? In 2007, that's where Disney Channel <laughs> peaked. Because so you had everything else going up to that moment. And after that, it just kind of downhill from there. That's fair. I can, I can get, oh my God, Starstruck. I forgot how Starstruck is. Um, oh, anyway, yeah. it's another banger. <laughs> I was waiting yeah. for that to be in your honorable mentions. You love Star Trek. I love the music from Star Trek. I could care less for the, the story. Do you know why they don't kiss at the end? Why? Because Sterling Knight was 20 and the girl, the main character girl, was 14. Oh, my oh. God. All right. Oh, all right. Yeah, Never mind. That's, right. a, that's, a <laughs> that's why they don't kiss at the end because they're fucking six year age gap. What was their decision making on that? On that Yikes. casting choice? Jesus Christ. Um, all right. On that note... <laughs> <laughs> on that note, our next episode, Jordan, you want to reveal? Wait, we already know. We already know the topic. Yeah, we already know yeah. the challenge. Yeah. We're watching American Vandal. Yeah, next episode is American Vandal. We'll mm-hmm. have watched all season one, and we'll give you our thoughts and our review on it. Um, guys, thank you guys was so that much. ending yeah. supposed to be a significance of how we've grown up, and we're in what? our twenties now? Oh God! Oh no. God! I don't know. Um, Wasn't meant to be. Yeah. So thank you guys for listening. If you want to hear the rest of our thoughts about our topics, tune into our full episode on the Patreon. Um, please follow us on Twitter at Committed Crits. That is C O M M I T T E D C R I T S. We're also on YouTube and TikTok at Committed Critics, spelled as you as it would normally, not the Committed Crits. Special thanks to our Patreon um, supporters: Davy Peppers from Game Mechanics, Ryan Kowalski from Ryan Plays Drums, Andy Phillips from Andy Phillips, Jody Wright, Devin Vonderheide, and Bryn Morales. And we'll see you guys in two weeks. Bye bye.